All right, so you get home with a brand new ultra widescreen display and you plug it into your brand new M1 Mac Mini and what's the first thing you notice? Yeah, another compatibility issue. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna talk about yet yeah, another compatibility issue with the M1 Max. And this time it has to do with the ultra widescreen displays. If you're running an ultra widescreen display like I am, you probably already realized that the Apple M1 chip hasn't been configured properly to recognize the aspect ratio of an ultra wide screen. The aspect ratio of an M1 Mac with the new Apple Silicone um, the Apple Silicone can support a 6K resolution monitor with a 60 refresh rate. Now, when you plug in an ultra widescreen display and you go into the display settings, you can actually see what type of resolutions are available to you. When you go into the display settings, hold down the control key while you click on scale and you'll actually see the different resolutions available to you. The max resolution that you can actually pick is 3840 by 1080, so 3840 by 1080. The problem is most ultra widescreen displays, like the one I'm using, is a 5120 by 1440. I'm using the Samsung Odyssey G9 display, which is absolutely beautiful. It supports up to 240 refresh rate. When you plug it in, you can't take advantage of the not only the refresh rate, but also just the aspect ratio. When you plug it in at the 3840 by 1080, your screen really isn't taking advantage of all the, the real estate you have by using an ultra widescreen display. The text isn't crisp and sharp like it should be, and all the icons are overblown. Um, so there really isn't an option to use the ultra widescreen. You can use it, but again, you're not really taking advantage of the reason why you purchased an ultra widescreen in the first place. So what are we supposed to do while Apple's still working on this fix? The Apple support forum has actually said, Apple has come out to say that this is a known issue and they're working on a resolution. But the M1 chip's been out for several months now and we still don't have a resolution to the issue. So I found another third party software that will temporarily fix this issue for us. Uh, what I mean by another is if you saw one of our previous videos where I talk about the Yeti X microphone and how the Yeti X software isn't compatible with Apple Silicone, I showed you a software you can use to help resolve that. Then in this case, the software that we need to use is called Switch Res X, and I'll leave a, a link to their website in the description down below. You do have to pay for the software. It's 16 bucks for a license to use it. They do offer enterprise solutions, but if you're like me, I really just wanna use this beautiful display on my brand new M1 Mac and use it to its full potential. You can download the software, pay the 16 bucks. Actually, Switch Res X offers a free trial period, so download the software first, Give it a try. Make sure this will resolve your issues before you buy it. Uh, now, I do have a couple of weird bugs that happens with the software. Anytime the computer boots up, Switch Res X is supposed to automatically switch into the resolution that you set it to. I find that it works maybe half of the time. The other issue, and really the more annoying issue, is when the computer goes to sleep and puts the monitor to sleep, when it wakes up, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna get. Every time it wakes up, it seems like it's a different setting. So it, tempor so it definitely is a temporary fix, and I hope Apple resolves it soon. But in the meantime, um, this certainly does let you use adva take advantage of your ultra widescreen display. And for 16 bucks, after spending $2,000 on a monitor, I'm gonna pay the 16 bucks to use my monitor, but I should have to. So again, another compatibility issue with Apple. I hope Apple resolves these issues soon, but until then, this is what we have to deal with. So again, just a quick short video to tell you how to resolve it. I've seen a lot of people talking about um, these issues that they're having with the ultra widescreen display, and I found a solution, so I just thought I would talk you through it. Thanks for joining for this video, and we'll see you in another video coming up soon. If this video helped you, please leave us a thumbs up and click subscribe um, to see more videos like this. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.